Hello. Um, I just wanted to make a bit of a response to your video. You know, I just wanted to say, first of all, that I really liked your video. I made a couple comments, I, uh, I did up some little notes, but, you know, all that is really, you know, kind of trivial, irrelevant stuff. Um, you know, I just, I, I wanted to say that I really appreciate a lot of the things you do on YouTube, and I'll talk about that, um, later in the video, probably after I talk about some of the more, uh, how can I put this, clinical stuff. I I'm gonna try not to get, you know, too technical about any of this, because I realized lately that one thing I do a lot is intellectualize about stuff, and I don't often get in touch with the real emotional parts of it, or talk about my own experiences as much as I probably should. So, I'm just gonna try and talk from the heart a little bit more, I guess, in this video, and hopefully in other videos. We'll see. We'll see how, uh, how that takes me, but, um, or, you know, however you want to word that. So, one of the things you mentioned here looking at my notes again, um, diagnosis issues. Um, I had a therapist once, my first therapist, the one who actually, you know, helped me with some of this stuff. And she didn't believe in diagnoses at all. And, like, she didn't believe in, like, diagnosing people, slapping labels on them, as she referred to it. This used to really frustrate me. I used to go in and question her over and over, why won't you tell me what my diagnosis is? I felt like she was really maliciously holding something back from me, you know, when she wouldn't diagnose me. And, you know, now that I think about that, I'm like, I don't really know why I had so many issues with her not wanting to diagnose me. I think I really, I was looking for, you know, I wanted a quick fix, I guess. And I guess I thought somehow having a diagnosis or several diagnoses maybe would get me that quick fix that I was looking for, that, that painless little recovery thing, which as we both know is completely impossible. I didn't know that at the time. I, you know, I just wanted to feel better, I wanted to be better, and I just wanted her to give me a fucking diagnosis, you know? And she wouldn't, and you know, she kept asking me, or, or like saying to me, you know, we really need to figure out why it is that you want this diagnosis so bad, and I just, you know, I scoffed at that, I thought it was really obvious, but the problem with diagnoses is that, as you said, you know, I'm just trying to remember the exact words that you said, um, something about, God, my mind is like going blank here, this is really embarrassing, kinda, yeah, um, you were talking about, oh yeah, people have different symptoms of the same disorder, and yet they all get diagnosed with the same disorder, you have, you, you know, you're totally, totally reading this completely right here, people do have different symptoms but get the same diagnosis, like, different ways of manifesting the same symptoms, and this really goes along with that whole thing you said about basing programs around personality, is what I have written here, um, and like program rigidity, like when you go inpatient or whatever and all the rest of it, people tend to want to really quantify things, they want to have one set, like, thing where they can put you in one label, they can put you in one treatment, and there is this whole one way of getting better. But, but what people don't seem to realize is that there is no one way of getting better because everybody's different. And, you know, it amazes me that it took me this long to figure it out, but I realize why it took me long, a long time to figure out why a diagnosis wasn't going to get me better. And it's because everybody else thinks that a diagnosis will get you better. Thinks that one method will, will make you well. And I don't know why it is that they think this. I think sometimes it's easier for people to believe that when, like, I don't know, they have this perfect program that'll fix you right up. And if it doesn't work for you, then you must just be an anomaly. People think it's, like, I don't know, em emotionally easier, maybe, if 
they don't have to take the blame when you fail. I mean, maybe I'm totally misreading that, but it, it seems like to me that if you go through somebody's treatment and they've had these all these like you know theories and research and stuff done to prove that it works for a lot of people and it doesn't work for you, then it's your failure in all the programs. You know, clearly you're not right for this program. Clearly it's a problem with you, but. You know, that's, that's not the way real life works, you know. Everybody's different. And I mean, different people are going to react differently to different programs. And, and this is, you know, I said something about, I have accommodating written here in capitalized font. Um, people really have to be accommodating with the way they treat other people because there is no one cure-all for everybody there is nothing on this planet that's going to work for everybody all at once. It's just, it's not humanly possible. There are always variables. There are always people, like there's always a, a majority clumped in the center. And then on either end of the spectrum, there are always other people that don't fit the majority. That, that's the way life is. And, and I don't understand why people, I don't know, you have this diagnosis now and suddenly it becomes impossible to have a spectrum? Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me and I think that's the kind of thing that you're really hitting on in what you're saying here. And one thing I wrote here, I wrote passes from programs. Like, you, you were talking about how, you know, a month is, is a decent length of time to be impatient and then you kind of get, you know, you get itchy to get out and to you know, live your life again, but, um, were you ever in programs that had passes? Like, you know, hour passes, two hours, four hours a day, weekends? Because, I don't know, it seems to me like some programs implement that sort of passes system where, you know, you go up the ranks, the privileges or whatever, and you get longer passes to go home or to go out to movies or out with friends or whatever. Um, I know Homewood, the place that I'm going to, um, like, I think the second phase up from the starting phase, you can have a day pass. You get a two-hour pass, like, if you want to take it or whatever, even on the very first phase. And, like, the second phase is, you know, a four-hour pass, the third phase is a day pass. I don't know how it goes from there. But did they never have that kind of thing when you were in treatment? Like, it seems absurd to me that they'd want to keep you in physically in your, that program, like, forever. And, I mean, I thought Renfrew also had the passive system, I think you were talking about your friend, and how, I don't know, something related to how you weren't sure if she would, uh, you know, have that sort of freedom when she was there, but, I mean, on the Thin documentary, they did get passes sometimes, so it was just, you know, Wondering about the whole passes thing. Maybe you could, I don't know, leave a comment or write an email or something. Um, okay, I'm going to continue this in another video. So, yeah, you're going to have two responses from me. Um, I, I, I guess I just have too much to say. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, if you don't want to watch it, I'm not making you. But, um, yeah, video number two coming up.